What's going on, people? My name is Steven, and welcome to Dare to Capture. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about beginner photography mistakes. Now, photography is something that's not gonna be easy, but it's something that you can definitely get better at as you move along with it. However, the further along you go with it, the more things you're gonna experience, which means you're gonna to have to probably run into a lot of problems, and with problems come mistakes. And the more mistakes you run into, the more you're gonna learn. So you should expect to make some mistakes along this journey. However, don't let those mistakes discourage you because mistakes happen to everyone. Nobody's perfect when they first start out anything. And to be honest, nobody's perfect even with years and years of experience. So on that note, I'm gonna talk about six very common mistakes for beginners when it comes to photography. And no worries, these mistakes are gonna be things that you can very easily fix if you pay attention to what you're doing and you're willing to learn from the mistakes that you're making. The first mistake that I'm gonna talk about is rushing the shot. Now, as a beginner, you probably have a lot of excitement, a lot of energy, a lot of adrenaline going through you when you're beginning using your camera. So that could easily lead to you rushing every shot that you take. Now, when it comes to cameras nowadays, a lot of them do a ton of work for you, but you need to get the camera time to actually do what it's supposed to do. You can't just rush around taking shot after shot after shot and expecting the camera to capture everything that you're trying to get without giving it time to actually adjust to what you're doing. Your best shots are gonna come when you really take your time, take a deep breath, make sure everything's set up and you give your camera time to do what it's supposed to do so that you can get the picture that you're hoping to get. When you give your camera time to do what it's supposed to do, you're almost guaranteeing that you're gonna get the shot that you really wanna have in the end. As I said earlier, photography is something that's not easy and that means that it could take a little bit to actually develop an eye for the photographs that you're trying to get. This is even more of a reason that you need to slow down, take your time, and not rush any of your shots. You'll find that the more experience you get with your camera, you're gonna actually start moving faster and faster throughout each shot, but it's not gonna feel like you're rushing anything. You're gonna develop that eye for photography and you're gonna be able to get the shots that you want much faster. You're gonna be able to go through the entire photo taking process much faster and all of this is gonna be done without actually rushing, so your shots won't look rushed, they're gonna look like you actually took your time, which you kinda actually did because you know exactly what you're doing with all of that experience that you gained. Now the next mistake that I'm gonna talk about is gonna seem like it's not a mistake at all, and that's not using a tripod. Now using a tripod is something that definitely isn't a necessity when it comes to taking a great photo. However, for beginners and even people that have years and years of experience, using a tripod can really help stabilize your photos and help make sure that you're getting the great shot that you want. You're probably thinking that a tripod isn't necessary at all, and like I said, it's not necessary to get a great photo, but having a tripod is gonna be something that is always gonna be undervalued when you're taking photographs. When you have a tripod, you're almost guaranteeing that you have a stabilized and level photo every single time. You'll find that, especially at the beginning of using a camera, you're gonna be messing around with a lot of camera settings, which means you're gonna be messing with things like ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. Messing with these settings is gonna completely change the way your photo looks, so because of this, having a tripod is gonna be even more necessary. So for example, when you mess with shutter speed, you're gonna get a lot of blurry photos. Now, depending on what type of photo you want, you're gonna have different types of blurs that are in the photo itself. So you can have blur from camera shake or you can have blur from the subjects actually moving but your camera is staying steady. Without a tripod, the longer your shutter speed is, the harder it's gonna be to hold your camera steady. If you don't believe me, here's a couple handheld shots of a shutter speed that's a little longer without using a tripod at all. I hear these same photos with the same shutter speed, but actually using a tripod. As you can see, the difference is very clear because holding a camera steady for a longer shutter speed is much harder than it looks. We all like to think we have steady hands when we're holding a camera, but with these longer shutter speeds, you're gonna notice that your hands aren't nearly as steady as you may think they are. When you have a tripod, you're gonna eliminate any possibility of having camera shake and you're always gonna have a stabilized and level photo no matter what. 
So just make me happy and always carry around a tripod with you, no matter how bulky or inconvenient it may seem at times. You're gonna find that always having it could make it the most valuable piece of equipment that you carry with you no matter what. The third mistake that a lot of beginners make is only shooting from one angle. And by this I mean they probably only take the camera, they set it up, and they only take that eye level shot. Now there's nothing wrong with taking that eye level shot, but you're not really getting anything creative out of it. Photography is something that can allow you to be as creative as you want, so you want to change things up. You want to take things and take your photos at a different angle. When you take your pictures at a different angle, you're going to show a certain subject matter in a completely different light. You're going to be able to see things completely different. If I take an eye level photo of a tree, it's going to look like a normal tree. But if I take a picture of that same tree from a different angle, I show it from a different perspective, the tree is going to look completely different than what it was. Now the subject matter is the same, but the tree looks completely different than what it did in the previous shot. When you're a photographer, you want to add something different to your photos. You want to make it look much more dynamic than what appears to the naked eye. Taking your photos from different angles and different perspectives is going to allow you to take that next step in your photography because you're going to be showing the world from a different point of view. You're going to be showing your audience things that they may not be able to see because they only see things from a certain way. They only see things from this eye level. They don't get below things, they don't get above things, they don't see things from a bigger perspective, they don't see things from a different perspective. Now I'm not saying that taking your photos from eye level is bad, but I'm saying that taking them from eye level isn't going to add anything different to your photos. When you're a photographer, you want to try and stand out in some way that makes people more intrigued by you, right? So when you're able to add something different by taking these photos from a different angle, you're going to show that you have a bit of creativity to you. And when you're able to show people your creative side, they appreciate the work that you're putting out even more. And I guarantee you once you start taking photos from different angles and different perspectives, you're going to find that taking shots from an eye level just won't really cut it for you anymore. Now this fourth mistake that I want to talk about is going to be one that's extremely frustrating because most people don't catch it right away, and that's going to be taking shots that are out of focus. I say this is something that people don't catch right away because a lot of people don't notice the blur that they're when they're taking the photos themselves. They only notice them after the photo's taken. So taking shots that are out of focus is going to be a mistake that's extremely, extremely frustrating. It's going to be frustrating because one, you're not going to notice it right away, and two, when you notice it, it's probably going to be way too late to take the same exact photo, and three, a blurry photo is just completely useless. You're not going to be able to use an out of focus photo for anything. Even if you have a camera that uses autofocus, which is something that most cameras have nowadays anyway, it's going to be something that doesn't always save you from taking a picture that is out of focus. Now autofocus is a great tool that I use all the time, however it doesn't mean that the subject you want to have focused is always going to be in focus. Autofocus could easily focus on something that is completely different than what you want to have focused. So for example, I could be taking a picture of somebody standing right in front of me, but the focus could be on a building that's right behind them and that's going to cause the photo to look completely different than what I want it to be. And in the end, it's just going to be a useless photo because the person that I wanted to be in focus isn't in focus. Now there's another feature on most cameras that is manual focus. Now that is a lot harder to use, especially for beginners, because you have to manually focus everything. You have to make the focus exactly where you want it to be. And a lot of the time, when you feel like you have the right focus, it's not going to be the right focus, and you're not going to notice that until probably the editing process when you're reviewing all your photos. So for beginners, I would recommend using autofocus but you really need to take your time, slow down, and make sure the focus is set on exactly where you want that focus to be. That way, you're more than likely gonna get the exact photos that you want every single time. The fifth mistake that I'm gonna mention is not knowing your camera settings. Now, why is this important to begin with? It's important because there are so many different settings and things that you can change with your camera nowadays that every photo you take can be unique in its own way. And not knowing your camera settings could cause a lot of issues in the long run. Now when you're a beginner, it can be very easy just to turn your camera on and start taking photos. That's what everyone wants to do and it's perfectly understandable. However, you need to understand your camera inside and out. And this means knowing all the settings that go with your camera. 
When you know your camera inside and out, taking the exact photos that you want and need is gonna come much easier for you. So if you're taking a photo of something and you notice that something's just a bit off, knowing your camera, you're gonna be able to change a few settings, just minor touches here and there, and you're gonna get the photo to turn out exactly how you want it to turn out. Another thing is that you're not always going to be able to manipulate the environment around you. So you're not always going to have the best lighting or the subjects aren't always going to be as bright or dark as you want them. And this is going to mean that you have to make some changes to your settings. So knowing how to change your settings and knowing your camera settings to begin with is going to allow you to make those changes a lot faster and these changes are going to come much easier and the entire process of taking a photo is going to be much faster in the end. So just understanding everything about your camera is just going to take you much further and help you become a better photographer much faster in the end. Now the sixth and final mistake that I'm going to mention is that an expensive camera is not going to automatically make you a good photographer. Now I'm sure there are some of you out there that spent thousands and thousands of dollars on a camera and just assumed that because you have this camera, you're gonna automatically be a great photographer. Harsh reality check, this isn't true. Although you spent thousands and thousands of dollars on a camera, it's not gonna operate itself. The camera is a tool that you use and you need to know how to use it. This is another reason why knowing all your camera settings is gonna be important because if you know all these settings, you're gonna be able to use your camera to its fullest potential. Just having the camera itself, attaching a lens and pressing a shutter button isn't gonna make you a good photographer. Does an expensive camera help make things easier for you and gives you a better chance to be a great photographer? Yes, but a camera is a piece of machinery that only does what you tell it to do. So you're the one setting the settings for your camera, you're the one pressing the shutter button, you're the one pointing the camera where it needs to be pointed. So everything that the camera does is because of you. So don't just assume that because you have a very expensive camera, you're going to be a great photographer. You need to put the work in and understand exactly what you're doing so that you can become that great photographer no matter what camera you actually have. You can have all the right tools for success, but if you don't know how to use those tools, you're never going to reach a level of success that you want. So mistakes are going to happen. You need to expect mistakes to happen at some point. You can try and stay perfect for as long as you can, but know that mistakes are gonna happen. Even the most experienced photographers will make a mistake at some point. Nobody's perfect. So keep in mind these six mistakes that I've mentioned today and try to do what you can to eliminate them before they even happen. That's one thing about mistakes. You need to understand why they happened. You need to understand how they happen. And then you need to learn from those mistakes. When you're able to learn from them, you're able to eliminate them as much as possible. And when you're able to eliminate them, you're gonna be able to take that next step and level up in your photography. So, if this is a video that you enjoyed watching, hit that like button. If you have any comments, questions, or probably any other mistakes that you feel a lot of beginners make, leave a comment below. And if you're interested in seeing many more Dare to Capture videos down the road, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And on that note, I'm Steven from Dare to Capture. See you in the next one.